Hello everybody, this is Chris, and this is my channel, Barnon 11970 Thank you, as always, for taking the time to listen to what I have to say. And it's actually kind of ironic, the title that I was, um, and the subject I wanted to talk about in this video, about frustration. Because I was setting up the live show, all ready to go, I'm starting to record, and then I realize and remember that YouTube has banned me, still, for a video that should I should not have been banned for, but regardless. So I tried twice before I remembered, oh yeah, I forgot, they've banned me for three months for the most ridiculous a thing, which made me even more frustrated. So, irony, you are sweet in your uh, way of telling the story and making it fun. But welcome, everybody. My name is Chris, and of course... This is my channel, Barn on 11970, and hopefully you'll listen to this, and maybe it'll be the right time for you. Maybe it'll there'll be something in here that I say that kind of helps, and to me, that's what it's all about, because even if 99% of this doesn't work for you, if there's 1% that you could take from this and it helps you, then to me, that's a good thing, and it serves a purpose, because the one thing I've seen, especially recently... A lot of people are starting to get frustrated with a lot of different areas of life. I mean, with the way that we're being divided in all different ways, either by our gender or by our color of our skin or our religion, sexual preference. I mean, there's so many different ways. The way that Hollywood, even with movies, how they're taking, like, Star Wars movies, for example, and just totally... It's almost become a slap in the face with the original fans and the way the media is treating people. It's just, I can understand where people are getting frustrated. Times are still hard. You see gas prices starting to rise. People's economic levels are not raising like they'd hope and people are struggling. And the body is almost like a sponge. It can only hold so much before it starts to leak out the side. And I can sense so much frustration out of people. And it's almost hard to understand where to turn to and what to do. Because a lot of times when we're sad or frustrated or angry or any of the negative kind of emotions, we've been taught to basically hold them in. And a lot of times we don't have people to talk to, which is ironic this day and age with social media and with our ability to communicate instantly, that yes, we might have followers or people who will read something that we wrote on a tweet or a watch a video that we've done, but people have become more and more distant and separated and lonely because it's not the same as the, the yesteryear of you know visiting a bunch of friends or going to learn something by actually being somewhere, not just Googling it or viewing it on a video, actually experiencing it. And one of the things, the sad things about technology is the more technologically advanced the society becomes, the weaker minded and the more stressful we become because we rely so much on technology that we forget our way. I mean, how many people now drive in their car and have their GPSs on even when they know where they're going? How many people do you know that cannot separate themselves from their phones? Where just walking down the street or even being at dinner with somebody you even love, you're more likely to look at your phone than actually engage in a conversation. So I can understand, or what I like to say, understand of all the frustrations but to hold them in is very dangerous to your mind, body, and soul. Because one of the things I've learned with over 20 plus years of being a massage therapist is even things that are not physically hurting you, and we're talking about the mental aspect, can affect you physically over time. You know, like they say, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. That is so far from the truth. Because a stick and stone, yes, may break your bone, but your bone will heal. 
A name that devastated you when you were a child could be something that can affect you 60 years later in your life. And there's a reason, for example, like a teapot. There's a reason why it has that little hole. Because it has to let the steam escape. Because if you've ever taken, for example, a two liter of soda or any carbonated beverage and shook it, well, it'll stay bottled up until you unscrew the cap. But what will happen? It will explode. And that's why we're seeing so much negative energy in this world now, so much hatred and division, is people are so frustrated by the fact that we are getting restricted from what we can say. And even YouTube is highly guilty of this. I mean, my last video I did, and I'm sure this will be the same thing because it happens in every video, no matter what I do, my video is going to be automatically flagged as inappropriate and unadvertiser friendly blaming some kind of ridiculous thing even though i don't show anybody's content i don't curse i don't say anything that i wouldn't let a child listen to because if you listen to this video i guarantee you if you have the right frame of mind and you're not here for the wrong reasons that after you've watched this if you watch the whole video you'll say i would have no problem having a child listen to this and yet youtube will punish especially smaller channels because if it doesn't fit their political agendas, they don't want it to be heard because they don't want people with critical thinking anymore. They want people to just look at the fancy lights and the special effects and be oohed and odd and wowed over something that looks pretty, but just ignore that there's no context. There's no story. There's no thought process. And that causes frustration as well. I mean, heck, at one point on this channel, I used to make videos every day. But because of the frustration of knowing that even though I have 42,000 subscribers, maybe 600 people will actually get to see this video, that does create frustration. So I feel the same pains that you do. But what I want to try and get people to focus on is not that frustration as a negative thing. See it as an obstacle to overcome. Because you ever wonder in, when you don't answer a question right in school, you fail the grade, you have to continue to relearn the lesson. So in other words, let's say you're in eighth grade. You don't do the homework, you don't study, you don't learn the lessons. And ultimately when you have to take all your final exams, you fail them. Well, you're going to have to repeat that grade all over again. Which means because you didn't learn the things you were supposed to learn, you have to learn them all over again. And that process will continue until either A, you decide to study and learn so you can continue on, or you give up and quit. Well, if you give up and quit, then you never learn what you were supposed to learn. And a lot of times our ego prevents us from moving forward. Or our depression, our mind could be your worst enemy. Say, oh, you can't do that. No one else has done it. Or everybody's against your point. And people are so afraid to stand up anymore because they're afraid to be outside of what the masses think. And that is the programming that's happening right now in Hollywood, in the media, and even in governments, is to think of the group instead of the individual. Because it's a lot easier to control a group than it is a group of individuals. Think of it like sheep. The reason that sheep are easily controlled is they follow one another. So you only need one or two cattle ranchers and maybe one or two sheep dogs to control a couple of hundred sheep. Because they'll all follow each other. Now, just imagine if you had 300 sheep that all decided to think for themselves and go in whatever direction they pleased. Do you know how much more difficult it would be to have them wrangled up? You definitely couldn't do it with two cattle ranchers and two sheepdogs. You'd need hundreds. So the programming is all about getting people into groups. And that's why you see... The feminist groups and the men going their own way groups and the Black Lives Matter groups 
and the religious groups and the transgender groups and the whatever groups. It's divide and conquer and get everybody into an individual group, a section. Say, where do I fit in? But the thing is in the world, like if somebody asked me, what race am I? My answer would be, I'm of the human race. And yet we keep dividing ourselves instead of realizing, because you need real eyes to realize, I've said that in so many videos, that we are all under the same race. It's called the human race. So what if we have different skin color? So what if we have different sexual preferences? Isn't that what life is supposed to be about? It's about people being different. Isn't that the beauty of life, is seeing so much variety? I mean, how boring would the world be if there was only one kind of tree, only one kind of flower, only one kind of food, only one kind of animal? It'd be pretty boring. And yet, leaders and Hollywood and the media are all trying to get people, and it works like a charm, to put themselves in certain groups so we could fight and argue with other people. Even down to the point where if you're a Yankee fan and somebody else is a Red Sox fan, they'll hate each other just because of the fact they don't like the same team, even though they both have a passion for the same game. It's all about getting people to fight amongst themselves, and that's what creates the frustration, because now they're trying to silence words. Because it might offend a few people. Now, if you know anything about democracy, it's supposed to be like Spock once said, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. But now it's the few that are trying, trying to control the needs of the many. Now, does everybody have the right to be heard? Of course. But if your right to be heard is done based on trying to silence others, then you're becoming the very thing you hated. And people don't want to stop and see that. They would Because it's easier to hate. It's easier to just join a group and say, this is something I'm comfortable with. And even if there's a few things that I disagree with or they do wrong, I'm just going to ignore those things for fear of retribution or attack. And the frustration sets in because people want to say what they feel, but they're not allowed to. Because if you, heaven forbid, say the wrong word, people will pounce like vultures attacking a carcass with no mercy and the problem with group thought is eventually your group will be targeted and then who's going to protect somebody that has been using a goal to hurt others to create their own beneficial ways because like they say two wrongs do not make a right and if we continue to live in the past we will never have the present because they want you to focus on look at all the things that happened beforehand instead of focusing on what can you do now because it gives people something to cling on to but that's not always a good thing most people do not think about the consequences of their actions because they live just in that particular moment or in the past they forget about you also have to prepare for your future and the roads that you take. Because regardless of what group you're in, you are solely responsible for you. And trust me, your group may protect you, but they will only go so far. And that's why you see people sell out to each other all the time. Because if it comes between them and you, they're not going to pick you. Why do you see so many people leaving gangs? And when they joined them, they were under the impression of, oh, we always got you back and we're going to protect you and, you know, this is loyalty and blah, blah, blah. And then they find out when push comes to shove and they're, you know, the you know what hits the fan, they're nowhere to be found. Or they even turn against you. The way to deal with frustration is to focus on what's causing the frustration and what you can do to fix it. And if that means you have to go against a certain group for your own principle, well, that's called integrity. And you should be proud of that because if you do not learn from your mistakes, you're doomed to repeat them. 
Ever wonder why the same things happen to you over and over again? Like I said before, if you fail 8th grade, you're going to have to continue to take it. Or you could give up. How many people give up by either things like taking their own lives or getting into drugs and alcohol? Do they lead you anywhere positive? Does it help you to grow? And trust me, this is coming from a person that's dealt with a lot of frustration in their life. I'm still going through it. It does pay to have a very good sense of humor from time to time. You need it these days. But the one thing I will never do is join any particular group and just follow along 100% with everything they view and think and say. Because then I'm no longer me. I'm just a follower who has no identity. And if you think from a controlling point of view, do you think that if you're in a group, you're not easily controlled or influenced when you're doing what everybody else is doing? Why do you think, for example, places like YouTube silence channels like mine and many others? It's because, not because we're doing anything wrong, because like I said, after you watch this video, I guarantee you, you'd have no problem showing this with a five-year-old child. And yet this video will hardly see the light of day. It will never become trending or viral. And I will be flagged as soon as it's uploaded. Or the trick they do now is wait a couple of days like they did in my last video. It's because they don't want free thought out there. Because if people started thinking for themselves, they would be much harder to control. Give them a couple of scraps and they'll follow you blindly. I mean, look at, and I tell people even on my other channel, the We Love Comics channel, is I tell people, don't settle for brand loyalty, especially if that brand is giving you subpar products or ideas. Just because you like them doesn't mean you are guaranteed to like them the next time they make something. Because if they have the mindset of, oh, well, we have such brand loyalty that we can do whatever we want, and these people are going to keep coming back, and you do, well... They're never going to make quality. They're just going to give just enough for you to purchase that next game or see that next movie or believe in their next idea. Don't settle for mediocrity because that's another way the frustration comes in. You have to be true to yourself before you could be true to others. Just like you can't love somebody else until you know how to love yourself. And unfortunately these days, I understand why people join groups. Because you feel that power of people agreeing with everything that you do and say because it's based on what they do and say. And people these days are so afraid to be out of the norm because they will be attacked. Believe me, I know that all too well. Even on my comic book channel, I have people that constantly spread hate to my channel no matter what I do and say because they don't like me. And they join the We Love Comics hating group because it's easy. It doesn't take intelligence, wisdom, strength, or power to spread hate, especially when it's somebody that I've never done or said anything wrong to. Anybody can join a bandwagon because, trust me, bandwagons are free. Hop on and join the group. But you notice some of the strongest people in the world throughout history have separated themselves from the crowd and went against what everybody said could be done or can't be done or shouldn't be done or hasn't been done or said or made. It's the ones that say, I'm going to do this and I'm going to take the chance and I'm going to give my all. And even though everybody says it can't be done, well, maybe I'll be the first one to do it. Because maybe they were all too afraid to try or too lazy to try. Misery does love company. Why do you think they say things like it's lonely at the top? It's because most people are too afraid or too unwilling to take the effort and don't have the, the true strength. Because true strength is not joining a group that you don't really believe in because you just want to fit in. True strength is being against those things, even if it's the unpopular thing to do. Because sometimes the right thing to do is not always necessarily the popular thing to do. It's easy to just go along with what governments say and how corporations treat us and see all the, the agendas and just ignore them. 
That's the easy part. It's easy to hate on somebody because everybody else is hating on them, and that's the cool thing to do. It's easy to wear something because somebody else says it's trending or it's in or it's cool. It's harder to be yourself because this world is trying to train you to not be yourself. To, you, they train you to be like somebody else. So if you follow everything that's trending, if you join a group even though you don't believe in everything they say and they can do nothing wrong, but yet somebody else's opinion is 100% wrong, then congratulations, you have been programmed and you don't even realize it. But the best part is, you know, like Neo in The Matrix, once he understood the situation, even though at first he didn't like it and he didn't believe it, when he came to terms with it, he was able to control it. So that's the thing they don't want you to tell you about. Because they always try and convince you there's strengths in numbers. Well, that's true to a certain extent, but it depends on the people and their truth. There's no group where everybody's going to believe in everything 100%, so why pretend to do that? Even when it comes to something like a company, or a brand, or an idea. And that's, again, why frustration set in, because people are so afraid to speak their minds, and they don't have anybody to talk to other than people that are strangers over the Internet. That's not the same as, you know... Having your arm, have somebody place their arm around you and confiding in you as a friend or a loved one. That it all builds up inside and they take out the anger on the wrong people. And some people do it just because it's fun. I have plenty of people that troll my channel and hate my channel and hate me just because it's fun to do. That's a very horrible, dishonest way to live life, but it's their choice. But here's the beautiful thing about choices. You can always make another one. So if you are frustrated, if you are in those groups and it's not what's making you happy, even though you thought fitting in would be what you really wanted, it it's, can be changed at any moment. And that all depends on you. Do you want to be one of the sheep, one of the herd, one of the ones that is easily influenced based on other people's say and opinion? Do you want to lose and sacrifice your honor and your integrity and what's right just to not be chastised? You could fix anything you want and you could ignore anything you want. Trust me, the people that hate me for whatever reasons, they're going to hate me regardless of what I do and say because they will not listen. But that doesn't punish me. It punishes themselves because they spend their whole lives angry. And the idea is not to see the negative emotions that we have to deal with as bad. It's like black and white, male and female, positive and negative. They're just different ends of the spectrum. There's nothing negative or bad about something unless you make it that way. Because if you learn from a mistake and it improves your life, and the only way you learn that lesson is through a negative situation... Well, was it really negative? Because if it served a better purpose for your present and your future, then how could it really have been bad? Like I've used the, the, um, the idea of if you were a kid and people said, don't touch the stove, and you touched the stove and burned your hand, yes, it's going to hurt, but it's going to leave a lasting impression for the rest of your life that says, hey, dummy, don't touch a hot stove because if you do, you'll hurt yourself. Well, even though you hurt yourself, you learn never to do it again. So something good came out of that bad experience. But unfortunately, most people see a bad experience and say, woe was me, and they give up. And it's like being in that eighth grade and fail two or three times and blaming the teachers and blaming the school instead of taking responsibility for your lack of effort and lack of studying. And then one day you just give up. You don't have to. And even if you do give up, doesn't mean it has to be forever. Can't you go back? Can't you start over again? Can't you decide today's the day I'm going to change and do something for the better to help mankind? So we can continue on these paths of separation and hatred and division and group thought. Be careful what you wish for. You may get it. And if you think your particular group that you're in is safe, trust me when I say, eventually your group will be attacked just like the people you may have been attacking in your group. 
you eliminate people through hatred, they will not come to your aid. And one day you're going to need them. And until we remember, the only race that matters is the human race. We're going to keep seeing color. We're going to keep seeing sexual preferences. Because trust me, you don't have to agree with everybody's lifestyle. You don't have to even like everybody's lifestyle. But that doesn't mean you should try and stop them from having it and having the right to do it, as long as they're not hurting or infringing the rights of others. And I've said this before. I, I make no mistake about it. I do not agree with a gay lifestyle. It's just not for me. But that doesn't mean I'm going to hate somebody because they have the right to have a gay lifestyle. I'm not going to try and stop them. Heck, I have had plenty of people in my life that I've been friends with who are gay. I have no problem. It's like broccoli. I hate broccoli. I don't eat broccoli. That doesn't mean broccoli is bad. It doesn't mean I want to banish it from the world and prevent other people from enjoying it if they like it. I'm not going to hate somebody else because they enjoy broccoli. I just don't like it. So I don't eat it. It's not part of my life. That's how I view the same thing about somebody's skin color or somebody's sexual preference. As long as they're not causing harm. But it doesn't mean I have to agree with it. And the problem in this world, people are so much focused on the group instead of their individual selves that they're trying to tell people and convince the world how powerful and strong they are. Well, if you were really powerful and strong, as you say, you wouldn't have to say it. You would show it. So like this whole, the, the whole movement where they're trying to convince you that women are all powerful and women can do everything. Let me tell you something. Women cannot do everything. And here's the funny part. Men cannot do everything as well. We're not meant to do everything. If you are convincing yourself that you are all powerful and you can do everything, well, let me see somebody spread their wings and take off on the ground with their own arms. It may sound ridiculous, but I'm trying to say you got to put yourself in realis realistic expectations. But if you think in that group that, oh, I can do everything because they say so, you're going to put yourself in harm's way because eventually you'll be proven wrong, and then who's going to be there to help you at that moment? Be strong, but be the best you can be. Don't worry about what a group says. Because if you have to convince the world how strong you are, then you're not strong. No matter how much you try and convince them. No matter how much you try and prove it. Who are you really pro trying to prove it to? Them or yourself? I'm not perfect in any way. But my wife loves me for who I am. My family loves me for who I am. The places that I do karaoke and my business with massage, my customers and clients appreciate me for who I am. I don't have to be the most beautiful person in the world. I don't have to be the richest person in the world. I don't have to be the strongest person in the world. I just have to be me and appreciate who I am, even if the world hates me. And that's one of the things I learned, especially with my experience on YouTube, because especially when I first started YouTube back around 2010, when I was naive to the internet, you know, I put a lot of trust in people. And then I was, um, let's just say, surprised at a lot of responses from people that hide behind the internet. And for years, I would let it frustrate me. Like, I felt like I had to convince these people. Well, if I have to convince people, then am I really as confident as I might have thought I was? Because one of the things I have learned, and especially recently, that's why I still get hate. It doesn't change. Because even if you change yourself, it doesn't change the outside world. It just changes how you perceive it. So just because I become different and grew, I still get the same hate from people. It just doesn't affect me the same way. I find it funny at this point. As a matter of fact, thanks to my haters, my ad revenue has doubled from 60 to 120. You know, who I can... You know, go buy that mansion in the Bahamas now with that extra hundred and twenty dollars. Well, that's hundred and twenty, and then I get sixty percent of it, so sixty percent of a hundred and twenty dollars a month, and that's with two channels combined with about almost forty-five thousand subscribers. Not anything to brag about, but 
the biggest thing I learned is when you argue with a fool, the only thing you learn is that there are two fools in the conversation. So even if you get out of the group thought, even if you eliminate your frustrations and you start becoming healthier and better and happier, that's not going to change the people that may hate you or may be jealous of you or whatever. It's just going to change how you respond because you don't care anymore or you find it funny or you just don't see it the same way it doesn't affect you the same way when you are an individual the groups that you are in will always be upset because when you leave their group that reduces their strength it reduces their power their combined energy because a group needs that combined energy to match the strength of one individual and most do not realize that because again you need real eyes to realize and that's why so many people can be programmed to believe anything tell a lie long enough it becomes the truth and that's why if you sp spell out the word believe and I recommend you do so right now unless you're driving there's the word lie in believe because there's a huge difference between knowing and believing. So you could say, everything I've said is 100% crazy. And you may believe that. It doesn't make it true. It may make it true for you, but it definitely doesn't make it true for me. So if you spend your whole life trying to convince me that my thoughts, my opinions, my beliefs are wrong, you're never going to change my mind. But are you confident in what you think? Because instead of you just living your life the way you want, you're spending your life trying to convince someone else to think the way you do. Does that really show strength? And yet the world wants you to be part of a group. And if you think it's not to control you easier, then your head is below the sand. The beautiful thing is you can wake up at any moment. It's all about choice. So if you want to stay frustrated, you will. If you want to stay in a group because it makes you feel comfortable, you will. But you'll never reach the goals that you want in your life. Because as an individual, you can do whatever you want without question. In a group, sometimes you need permission. Because if you go against that group, you'll feel the sting. So think differently. Be an individual. And please, if you've listened this far, YouTube is going to flag this automatically as inappropriate for whatever reason. There's nothing in this video whatsoever that's inappropriate. But they're going to do it anyway because this video helps people think on an individual basis. It's not about programming you to be one of the sleeping sheep, the sleeping masses. So I implore, beg, plead, whatever it takes. If you can please share this video, if you could please post it on your social networks, if you could please take the moment to give it a thumbs up or subscribe, it means the world to me. If you want to join my Patreon, it would help tremendously. Of course, there is no mandatory requirement for that. If we all start working together in, aspect, in that aspect, then that kind of group is a good thing. If we all are in a group of trying to awaken people for truth. But never forget your own individuality, even if you're in a group. Because trust me, the other group that you don't agree with is not 100% wrong. And the group that you're in is not 100% right. And if you see either one of those, then you're being blinded. And that's why they say, I once was blind and now I see. They're not talking about a blind man that all of a sudden they got their sight back. But then again, it depends on what you mean by sight. They're talking more inner sight. That's why you get insight. So thank you very much for listening. I always appreciate it. And yes, trust me, I get frustrated too. It's part of life. But if something good can come out of your frustrations, then it served a purpose and it was there for a reason. And believe me when I say, 
After this video is done, I will be less frustrated than I was before I started. It's like that little hole in that tea, ca tea kettle. It's there to help vent. So I thank you for listening and following me and allowing me the moment to vent. Very few of you are ever going to see this video, unfortunately. And there's not much I can do about that because it's under a regime called YouTube that is all about silencing free thought. But if you heard it, then at least it shows that we could never be 100% silenced. So never give up. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. And I'll see you next time.